Alright guys, so as you can see, I filled up the 20 gallon with um, stuff and the gecko, Leah. So, I had a great video on it, but apparently I actually deleted everything and yeah, it's just a mess. So, uh, this is the second time filming this video, so hopefully we can do pretty well or better on this. Um, so, first thing is, I've got this stand. It's kind of messy at the moment, but deal with it. Um, it's, it's nice. It's a stand. I had to, um, it wobbled, so I didn't want to put anything on it if it wobbled. So, I had to take this piece of PVC pipe and jam it in between the wall and here, just so it wouldn't wobble. And right now, as you can see, it won't wobble. Um, so, also, I cut a hole. Let me move this. Cut a hole through there so I can feed the wires down a lot easier. And mostly is because once I put this in and I jammed it in, I realized that I couldn't get the cord behind it. So I just had to cut a hole so I could get the cords down under. Well, I can't see, but down under to the outlet back down under there. Um, and that cord is for the heat pad, but the heat pad is connected to this um, the Zilla thermostat, which works great, in my opinion, because you can set it to what temperature you want. Now, it doesn't, it's not dead on with the temperature. That's why I have um, this Zoomed uh, digital thermometer, which helps you just to make sure that um, it is, in fact, at the temperature you want. So, like, it might, you might have it set here at 90. You might have it set here 90, but it might not actually go to 90, which it's finicky. Sometimes it's at 90 right away, sometimes it's not. I don't know why. It might have something to do with just the environment that it's set up in. I'm not sure. But, again, as I said, I love this Zillow product because it can shut off and it saves you power. It saves you about half as much. I mean, you use about half as much power as you normally would. And it keeps the temperature consistent, allowing your, um, your reptile to get the correct temperature and not to overheat. Alright, so now, um, oh, I forgot to mention the heating element, but the heating element here is a uh, 10 to 20 gallon, um, I believe, Zoomed, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Zoomed um, heat mat. So, that's under this warm okay. So, sorry I was interrupted, but um, this is under this um, hide here, which was uh, in my old setup. Oh, man, I'm going to focus. But, all right, there we go. It was in my old um, setup, which um, it's just like a Walmart, not a Walmart, a uh, PetSmart hide, you know. Um, I don't know what company makes it. And then here is an exoteric uh, reptile cave as a medium temperature hide for her and this works this works well she can fit in it all the way um then on this side we've got oops uh this ExoTerra water bowl small which works really well oh and this is a medium size by the way um you just got water in it you know it needs a warm hot or oh my god i don't know what i'm saying right now but this needs a food dish, which I don't have at the moment. I probably am just going to go take it out of the old one and put it in here. But I'm not sure. I'll do it probably after this video. Um, and then this is a uh, Exoterra Gecko Cave. And it has sphagnum moss in it. Um, the sphagnum moss it's, it's, is just for humidity. You wet it down. And the humidity helps them uh, leopard geckos... Um, shed and all the other reptiles and um i got this in a medium i don't know if i mentioned that um and then finally the substrate which is eco earth which is coconut fiber and a lot of people don't like using loose substrates for the reptiles because if ingested it could um cause impaction which is basically when it gets stuck in their stomach and they can't poop it out so they die. Um, but I've heard great reviews on this and people, I've, I don't think anyone, I haven't had any bad reviews on this. So I think that it should be safe. But 
I'm just testing it now. Now I've never used it, so you go at your own caution. Now, care for your leopard gecko. So, leopard geckos need around temperatures of 90 to 95 degrees, and that's what the thermostat is set at right now. Uh, there's Leah right now in her warm hide. Um, also, you want to um, feed them about every two days. I mean, that's what I feed her right now. She doesn't eat every two days just because it's winter and she senses the pressure, so she's a little bit sluggish at the moment. But during the summer, you want to feed them about every two days. I feed her dubia roaches. I have a dubia roach colony, which I should be making a video on uh, in the future. Um, I also sometimes feed her mealworms just as a treat and some superworms. But she seems to love the um, roaches pretty well. And when you... Oh, man, she just left. But when, when you feed your leopard gecko, you're going to want to um, dust her their food with um, calcium and with um, vitamins, a vitamin supplement. I feed... I the way I do it is every uh, three times... So, like, one time I feed her it dusted in the vitamin powder. And then three times I um, dust the food in um, calcium powder without D3 because the, vit the vitamin supplement I use, I don't have it on hand, but it uses D3, so she doesn't need to. And because she's corpuscular, she is pretty well, or she's pretty good at making her own D3, so she doesn't need that much, as much as other reptiles. Um, if you do not dust the food, which... I would never, I would say do not, not, don't, always dust the food of your reptiles because without calcium, their bones can become weak and they can get uh, metabolic bone disease, which you do not want. So, to make sure your little gecko's healthy, always give them the supplements and calcium they need. Alright, I think that's going to be about it. So, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. See ya.